So good morning all of you. Uh, today we are going to discuss uh, the first C. Uh, you remember we were talking about the seven C's for innovation. I am calling it Chakku's seven C's for innovation. So the first C is the cause. Causes to identify an unmet need, to find out where there is a problem and also go deep and check what the various uh, issues are of this problem. The second one. Context. The third one. Fourth. Fifth. Then the next. And the final one, which is the most critical one, is the. So innovation doesn't happen till, till there is connection. So connection means getting back there to the user. So every C has to be connected to the user very, very strongly at multiple levels. And we have seen that during this process, you need to repeat the connection with the user a number of times. Because if you're not really concerned from point of view of the problem, it will not really work. Because without that you know, empathy, you just can't come up with innovation. We came up with this very simple model called the core team. The enterprise-wide team and the external team. This is in the context of industry. If you take the context now of your class, what will the core team be? Core team will be the 10 people who are part of the team. What would be the enterprise-wide team be? Faculty on the campus, who else? Yes. Teaching assistants, very good. What else? Who will be your enterprise-wide team here? Lab assistants in labs. Vendors who supply equipment to your labs, all those become your people around you whom you can get to. PhD students in the labs, okay, and then who will be your networked external team? All outside resources, industries, large organizations. Very interestingly, these some of these organizations, if you just send them an email, they give you loads of data. For example, if you're you know designing a bottle, and I say I'm working on a new material for a bottle which is you know hygienic and which can stay for long durations without you know fungus developing inside, and I write to the largest pet manufacturers in the world, they send you catalogs, they send you information, they're ready to talk to you. So, for example, similar in my research, and I got this very interesting insight out of the an analysis which said that you need to have a constant user feedback loop along the process of design from day one to the connection. So this user feedback loop which we are seeing you know around the whole process of design and innovation has to happen at every junction. That's very tedious, right? it's very difficult to have uh, a user uh, uh, react to you very early. For example, you make a sketch, you want a user reaction. You make a mock-up model, you want a user reaction. You make a prototype, you take user reactions. You make pilot production, you take user reactions. And then you produce you know large quantities you are you know sure to succeed because your users are part of your feedback loop okay so we'll see that happening in action in this you know project where we're working on a low cost vein tracer what's a vein tracer any clue when you go for a blood donation and you know they want to take blood from your veins they need to do multiple pricks and it's quite painful then the average attempts in a child is 2.35, which is pretty high. So who are the target users here? The target users are the doctors and the caregivers and the secondary users here are the people. <coughs> now let us know what are the methods of understanding your user. You have to be in the location where the problem is happening, while it is happening and conduct an inquiry. To understand the problem at hand, understand their socio-cultural aspects, understand their livelihoods, because all those are very, very important for your design intervention. So, for example, you know, in our context of a blood bank. You have to be in the blood donation camp itself continuously for a couple of uh, days to understand what happens. So what is important over here is what do you think is the output mechanisms for all this? What should be the output of these studies? Any, any guess? For example, the experience mapping. What should be the output of this uh, study? What will you use as a resource to take back home after doing the study? Time motion analysis, video footages. And there are special softwares to even map these videos on to exactly tell you what's happening at when. And 
every area has got deep research knowledge. There are thousands and thousands of researchers working on every user, you know, uh, like uh, technique which I just mentioned to you.